हेलो स्टूडेंट टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स मींस एंजियोस्पर्मिक प्लांट्स अर्लियर आई टोल्ड यू दैट द एंजियोस्पर्मिक प्लांट्स दे रिप्रोड्यूस बाय बोथ द मेथड्स That is asexual and sexual methods both. Asexual reproduction, especially in the case of flowering plants, they reproduce by vegetative means, the stem, roots, or leaf. They can produce the new plant by the method of vegetative propagation. In this chapter, we will discuss about. how the flowering plants they reproduce by sexual method we will discuss about main reproductive organ of angiospermic plant female reproductive organ flower uh, fertilization zygote formation and how zygote develops into the embryo that is embryogenesis in all the flowering plants or you can say angiospermic plant flower first of all you have to start from here flower the flower is the <coughs> reproductive organ of the angiospermic plant in plant there are two parts that is vegetative parts and the reproductive part stem leaves and roots all these parts are called vegetative parts and flower is known as a reproductive part of an angiospermic plant it helps in the process of sexual reproduction each flower consist of the following parts that is calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium and you know a bisexual flower or you can say a complete flower is made up of these four parts calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium you can see here the diagram of the flower a typical flower this is the thalamus this one is the sepal these are the petals stamens and in the center there is the corbel sepal petal stamen and this one is the corpus so a typical flower <coughs> consists of the following parts calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium calyx is made up of sepals the second whorl means the second part that is corolla is made up of petals androecium is the third whorl third part of the flower consist of stamens and gynoecium is the last whorl made up of carpels so calyx is the outermost whorl of the flower made up of sepals corolla is the second whorl second part of the flower 
made up of petals. Androsium is the third part of a typical flower, consists of the stamens, and the last one, gynosium, is the last part of the last whorl of a flower consisting of carpels. The sepals and petals, these two whorls, they are not essential part of the flower regarding the sexual reproduction, but still they perform some function. The sepals, as you know, these are green in structure and sepals, they help to protect the bud before it opens. The second whorl that is petals. So many petals may be there in a typical flower. So many sepals may be also there. The petals are of different colors. And because of the different colors, the petals, they help to attract the insect and these insects are useful in the process of pollination. As you know, insects are good pollinators and insects always in search of the good, in search of the flower. And if the petals are very prominent, they can attract the insect even from a very distant place and the petals may be helpful in the process of pollination which takes place through the insect. But the third part that is stamen, stamen is a very important part of a typical flower. Stamen is known as stamen, the third part, it is also known as male reproductive organ of the flower and this one the carpel is known as carpel is known as female reproductive organ once again you can see here it means the flower is the reproductive organ of an angiospermic plant each flower is made up of how many parts? Four parts that is calyx, corolla, androsium and dimosium. Calyx is made up of sepals, corolla is made up of petals, androsium is made up of stamens and gynosium is made up of carpels. In these four parts, the sepals, the first part, sepals are helpful to protect the flower in the bud condition before it opens. Carola means the petals, they help in the insect pollination. And the third part, androsium, which is made up of the stamen, stamen is the male reproductive organ and the carpel is the female reproductive organ of the flower. Now, let us start with the first one. A structure of a structure of male reproductive organ that is stamen. Each stamen, see here the diagram, each stamen is made up of two parts. The stalk like structure is called filament and the upper part which is almost spherical in shape, club shape structure, and this is called 
एंथर द एंथर इज बाई लोक इन स्ट्रक्चर एंथर यू कैन राइट हियर बाई लोक बाई लोक मीन्स हाउ मेनी लोक आर देयर लोक मीन्स द पार्ट टू पार्ट आर देयर ऑफ ईच एंथर वन एंड टू एंड दिस टू पार्ट ऑफ द एंथर are well connected with a strand tissue and this is known as connective so this one is the filament filament helps to attach the anther to the base of the flower to the thalamus because all the holes they are well connected with the thalamus filament helps to attach the stamen to the base of the flower and this is the main part anther and each anther in angiospermic plant has two lobes anther lobes you can write here this whole structure is anther and it has two lobes and these two lobes are well connected with a tissue that is called sterile tissues and this sterile tissue is named connective tissue this is sterile why it is said to be sterile because this part do not produce the pollen grains now what is the function of the anther anther produces pollen grains or you can say micro spores now i will explain about the ts of the anther the parts of the anther if you will cut a transverse section of the anther each anther has four sporangium you can see here in a outline it looks like this these are at the connective tissues in a cross this is actually the ts of anther in transfer section if you are taking the anther and you are going to cut the transfer section each lobe as i told you each anther has how many lobes two lobes and each lobe has two pollen sac and this pollen sac is also known as microsporangium this here this one is the micro sporangium this is also micro sporangium micro sporangium micro sporangium so total in each lobe two micro sporangiums are there so in a anther total how many micro sporangiums will be there total four micro sporangiums will be there in each anther and that's why anther is said to be tetra sporangiate tetra sporangiate means total four pollen sacs are there in each anther or you can say total four micro sporangiums are there micro sporangium is also known as pollen sac in ts of the micro sporangium in ts of the anther each micro sporangium has two parts that is anther wall and sporogenous tissue you can see here each micro sporangium has the anther wall the anther wall consists of 
the different layers the outer layer is epidermis epidermis is followed by the next layer it is 2 to 3 layer in structure this is called endo endothesium then the next layer is middle middle layer and the last portion is the last part is tapetum tapetum this is anther anther wall anther walls and these tissues are sporogenous sporogenous tissues So each microsporinium, total four microsporinums are there in each anther, and each microsporinium has two parts: anther walls and sporogenous tissues. The anther walls consist of the four layers: outer wall is epidermis. Epidermis is then followed by two to three layers: endothesium, then the next layer is middle layer and the innermost layer it's very very important the innermost layer is tapetum these three layers epidermis endothesium and middle layer these three layers are protective in nature they protect the sporogenous tissues which produce later on the pollen grains and these three layers, except to the tapetum, also help in densions, means in the rupturing of the wall at the time of the maturation of the pollen grains. It helps in the proper dispersal of the pollen grains. And the tapetum, very very important, the tapetum, the last layer, that is tapetum, nourishes the pollen grains. When the sporogenous tissues, they produce the pollen grains, they need food materials and the food materials are provided by the innermost layer that is tapetum. Actually the tapetum cells, the tapetum cells contain dense cytoplasm, the cytoplasm is too much the tapetal cells or the cells of the tapetum also contain a prominent nucleus and overall the tapetal layer gives the food material to the pollen grains. So the same structure will be there in all the microsporangium. One already I have drawn here and you will make this outline structure of the TS of anther. What is the function of the sporogenous tissues? The sporogenous tissues, after meiosis division, meiotic division, it produces pollen grains. Suppose in a microsporium, hundred sporogenous tissues are there. One hundred sporogenous tissues are you can say sporogenous cells are there and all the hundred sporogenous tissues they undergo into the meiosis division or you can say meiotic division so finally 400 pollen grains will be produced because each sporogenous tissue is deployed in nature, sporogenous tissues act as the pollen mother cell and each pollen mother cell gives rise to four pollen grains after meiotic division. So 
हंड्रेड स्पोरोजेस टिश्यूज और हंड्रेड पॉलिन मदर सेल्स गिव्स राइज टू फोर हंड्रेड माइक्रोस्पोर्स नाउ द नेक्स्ट हेडिंग दिस डायग्राम इज एक्चुअली द आउटलाइन ऑफ द टीएस ऑफ द एंथ है बट इन द बोर्ड एग्जाम समटाइम्स देर द क्वेश्चन डेट मेक ए एन लार्ज व्यू ऑफ द माइक्रो स्पोरिजियम एन लार्ज व्यू मीन्स द पार्ट ऑफ ए सिंगल माइक्रो स्पोरिजियम यू कैन ड्रॉ लाइक दिस ऑल्सो इट इज गिवेन इन यूर एन सी आर टी बुक द आउटर लेयर वॉच ऑफ द माइक्रो स्पोरिजियम इज epidermis then you make here endothelium again the same topic i am teaching you here with this diagram two to three layers are for endothelium then you can make one more layer one or two layer middle layer middle layer then this one is the tapetum capital cells draw like this and the remaining cells or you can draw like this is porogenous tissues or microspore mother cell the diagram is enlarged view of a micro sporangium a large view of the micro sporangium and i told you the outer layer of the micro sporangium or you can say pollen sac is ap dermis it is the outer most layer then two to three layer structure is for endo thesium endo thesium is then followed by the next layer that is called middle layer and the innermost layer is tapetum tapetum and all these layers are collectively called anther wall then this is so i have shown here the is porogenous tissues or is porogenous cells e cell also act as the micro spore mother cell or you can say pollen mother cell that is here you can write mmc microspore mother cell or pmc pollen mother cell so this is the anther wall except to the tapetum as i told you this three layers they are protective in function they also help in the process of dehiscence in the process of the dispersal of the pollen grains outside and these sporogenous tissues are you can say the pollen mother cell or microspore mother cells these cells 
help to produce the pollen grains or you can say uh, microspores. Now the next heading is micro sporogenesis. Micro sporogenesis. What do you mean by micro sporogenesis? Micro sporogenesis is the process of the formation or you can say the production of microspores or pollen grains from microspore mother cell. Suppose this one is the pollen mother cell or you can say micro spore mother cell I have told you each <coughs> pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell undergoes into the meiosis and total how many pollen grains are formed? 4 these are the pollen grains or microspores and these four pollen grains are attached to each other and these four microspores petrol. So one, it's very very important you have to learn each pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell produces how many pollen grains? Four pollen grains or you can say four microspores by the process of meiosis. As you know the meiosis is a type of cell division in which a diploid cell produces four haploid daughter cells. So here the process of meiosis takes place and pollen mother cell is diploid in nature and all these pollen grains are haploid in nature. When four pollen grains are produced, all these four pollen grains are attached to each other and these four pollen grains are collectively called microspore tetrod but later on they also become separated to each other. This is all about the microsporogenesis. Now The structure of the structure of pollen grain. Pollen grain is also known as microspore. <coughs> Each pollen grain, you can see here the diagram of the pollen grain. Each pollen grain is unicellular in its structure. It is made up of a single cell. It has two wall. The outer wall is rough. It is known as exine. And the inner wall it is known as in time. Pollen grain. So pollen grain has two walls. The outer wall is a giant which is rough in surface and the inner smooth layer is called in time. It is smooth and a giant is very rough. This one is nucleus 
and this one is the cytoplasm. But later on, the pollen grain it forms two cells also inside. These two cells are this bigger cell is called vegetative cell and this is smaller cell which is the spindle in cell it's known as generative generative cell this is the structure of pollen grain now so the pollen grain this is the advanced stage of the pollen grain the pollen grain has how many walls two walls are there the outer wall is a giant the inner wall is in time a giant is the rough surface and in time is the a smooth layer it has the smooth surface it has two cells also the bigger cell this whole cell the bigger cell is known as vegetative cell and a small cell is also there inside the pollen grain this is called generative cell actually generative cell floats inside the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell now the agine do you know the agine is very hard layer and the agine is made up of a special type of organic substance this is known as a sporo pollenin it is the hardest organic material that is sporo pollenin present in the agine layer and because of the sporopollenin the pollen grain is highly resistant against the enzymatic degradation against the enzyme against the alkali or any acid and it is the hardest material and that's why the pollen grain is well preserved generally this layer is not degraded by the microbes by the bacteria by any other type of the microbes and that's why the pollen grain can be well preserved during the process of fossilization so it is very very important you have to learn about the organic material which is present in the agine and the name of this organic material is sporopollenin the next layer in time you can see the agine is not continuous this is not continuous at some of the places these gaps are there where agine is absent sporopollenin is absent and this is called germ pore this one is the actually germ pore and germ pore is the portion from where the pollen tubes pollen tube comes outside it forms pollen tube means actually the here the entine is projected gets projected outside and it forms the pollen tube this i will discuss later on in the process of the germination of the pollen grain on the surface of stigma but overall this is all about the pollen grain and one very important topic also the pollen grain is useful also for human beings because the pollen grains contain so many nutrients in the western country the pollen grains are used as a food supplement also 
the pollen grains are harmful also the pollen grains of the plant carrot grass parthenium which came into the india as a contaminant is the cause of allergy asthma so it is the cause of allergy also so pollen grains are useful as well as harmful also regarding the uh, human being now uh, you note down some of the questions related to the topic today which i covered please note down some of the questions the first question a question number 1 name the reproductive reproductive organ of an angiospermic plant question number 2 write the function of trepidum question number 3 what is micro sporogenesis explain with the help of explain with the help of diagrams question of 4 make a enlarged view of micro sporangium question 5 make a level level diagram of pollen grain and explain it's all parts so that's all for today and tomorrow i will teach you the next topic in this chapter thanks thanks a lot